Welcome, everyone, and hello, Gemma. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And now you are from Home Start Surrey. Yes, that's right. I'm glad I got that right. And it, and now I thought it was just UK, but it, you said no, it's international. Yes, we helped. Uh, we helped families abroad uh, in the armed forces. So Germany and Cyprus, to name a few. A few, okay. So um, now we we could talk about Home Start for a very very long time because they do so much. So I thought what we'd do is today we'll do a little bit of get to know about Home Start, and then you can come back and we can do a bit more focused, uh, for, for more focused stuff. Now Home Start, I mean I know what Home Start is, but a lot of people just think it's oh it's just like a play group sort of thing, you know. Some people think it's something to do with um, starting your car at your house. <laughs> Or um, getting your first home, so you're you're well on your way with the groups. Okay, okay, yeah. No, uh, so what you um, basically um, home start is all about helping young parents, isn't it? Yep. Well, it could be parents of any age, but p- parents who have got children under the age of f- school age, so five, six. Okay. And how did you get involved in it? So I was actually chatting to one of the teachers at my son's school as he was getting older. And um, I already had a part-time job. Yeah. Um, but I realised that as he, as he was getting older, I wasn't going to need to come into school as much and watch him play all his matches. <laughs> and I, I was talking to the teacher and I said, oh, I hope I'm not going to become one of those parents with too much time on their hands because I like to be busy. And she just said, oh, you should look at Homestart. And I'd literally never heard of it. Mm-hmm. So I went home, Googled it, found the website, looked at a few videos and thought, this is brilliant. I'm going to do it. Okay, so at home. So you started off at home start as a volunteer. Yes. Yeah, so I started off as a volunteer in 2019, the heady days of non-COVID. Pre-COVID. Yep. Yeah. So I did a ten-week, or well, it was about eight, nine, ten-week preparation course. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, obviously you're not just going to get put with a family. You have to go through obviously DBS checks and have all the relevant training, mm-hmm. which was I found it really interesting. The training. Okay. And then I became a volunteer, as I say, at the a end of the A proper volunteer. Yes. Okay. So the so what happens is you go into homes. Mm-hmm. Uh, a fully trained person goes in. The volunteer goes into the home to to help um, the, the parent or parents. Yes. Okay, with their young child. Now you're saying that it's it's not like social services or anything like no. that. It's a friendly visit and basically non-judgmental. Non-judgmental. You go in there. You have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever. Chat about what's going on. Um, so not just about the child, though, about the parent as well. Yes. Um, as we all know, all people who've got children know that it's hard work and there is no manual. So if parents find themselves struggling in whatever way, they can reach out to their local home start and potentially be matched with a volunteer who is local. And that volunteer, as I say, will go in. And for me, I was absolutely delighted that I got offered newborn triplets. Newborn triplets? Yeah. Okay. Which, you know, that my coordinator said, you know, would you be interested in helping a family with multiples? And I was like... Definitely. So, so for me, it was an absolute honour to go in and help this family with. They also had an older one as well, who's about two at the time. Um, so I went in, and obviously, if you've got triplets, doesn't matter who you are, you're going to need extra help. And they didn't have their family close by. Were you sitting there like with with one on each it was, arm? And yeah, it was it was it was, it was amazing. <laughs> you know, you think, wow, having one. People think one baby's hard. Try having three. Yeah. Yeah. Plus an older one. Yeah. So how long? I mean. When you go into someone's house, is it like an hour visit or do you just spend spend as much time as you can? So the allotted time is between two and four hours and that includes your travel time. Mm-hmm. And it, it tends to get longer as you get to know the family. Yeah. So obviously if you're going into a stranger's house for the first time, you the, on the first visit you'll have your coordinator with you because it would yeah. be a bit strange if, if you didn't. And then they, they tend to stay for say 15 minutes and then they sort of slowly make their way out the door and just sort of leave you to it. Um, so... Yeah, it can. It will never be more than say three and a half hours because obviously you've got to include the travel time. Okay, so and and the the volunteers. Um, you were saying that actually you have a volunteer shortage. We do, yes, and this is actually a nationwide problem. I think pre-COVID things were very different. I I did my course and there was about eighteen people on that course. Yeah. Um, and now they're running courses. There could only be four or five people on that course and we do the courses twice a year okay now we we're just looking at our figures now we're just collating some information and some areas are getting referrals of 20 families and they're getting 
two, three volunteers who are inquiring. So you can obviously see that there is a massive need for more volunteers. Yeah. So with the with the families, where do you, where do you get the um, where do they where do they come from? So there can be different avenues. Um, so they can self refer. Yeah. If they hear about it, word of mouth. You know, someone one of their friends might be having home start, and they think, well, do you know what, I could really do with that help um, through midwives, through health visitors, GPs, etc. Okay. The um, so you are are you you're, are you still a volunteer? Or? I am. Yes, I stayed with the triplet family for three and a half years, and I'm happy to say they're absolutely thriving. They're doing really. Do you really still well. meet out? I I will be hopefully meeting up. We sh- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they, I mean, the, the the kids are absolutely adorable, and Do I. They call you auntie. Pretty much, auntie Gemma. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't. Yeah, I, yeah. I really want to see them in the summer. I hope to see them in the summer because you do sort of become that you know surrogate aunt, surrogate granny. Yeah. Granddad, whatever. Um, so, can you just repeat the question? I've lost my train of thought. Oh, so have I. <laughs> but never mind. Never mind. We shall carry on. So, um, with your um, obviously, uh, you're you're a volunteer. Oh but, yes, that was it. But you also ah. do something else as well now, yes. don't you? Yes. So I've been really, really passionate about Home Start. Um, ever since I first discovered it, yeah. telling all my friends, you know, like I do recommending it. Some of my friends have actually signed up since. And then a role came available uh, for Home Start Surrey as a volunteer recruitment officer. Now, it's only part time. It's only six hours a week. I already have another job. I'm already quite a busy person. But I thought <laughs> six hours a week, that's perfect. And I do it anyway. So I jumped at the chance and I was very lucky to be given the role in April this year. So now, as, alongside being a volunteer, I'm also spreading the word about Home Start Surrey and, and hopefully recruiting more volunteers. And that's why you're here today. And that's why I'm here today. Yes, it's very exciting. So, fantastic. So, um, actually, Neil, one of the questions I actually ask is actually, yeah. what, what do you get out of it? What, 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 how do you feel about it? You know, what kind of makes you to keep doing it? Well, um, because I'm such a busy person, I think I'm busy doing this for this person, you know, I'm busy doing this for my kids. But actually, there's something about volunteering, and they have actually, they're actually doing a study of this at the moment at Oxford University. Yeah. It, it's really good for your mental health. Um, so it's not just that I'm like, you know, St. Teresa or anything like that. <laughs> I, I genuinely enjoy it. Uh, my kids are older now. My kids are teenagers. You know, they've gone past the stage of thinking oh, okay. that mum is like the the best thing in the world you know they're they're doing you're now the bank they're doing their own thing yeah Yeah. bank and taxi yeah exactly so to be hanging around with young kids i i I just love hang like playing with kids i think it makes you feel young yeah um it keeps you young and the joy that you get out of it when they you know spend time with you they're so happy to see you when you arrive and i absolutely love it so that's why i keep doing it well they, they do say if you want something doing give it to a busy person exactly Yes, so, this is, it, is very true. So, okay, so you've got the six hours a week. So, yeah. So may I ask you, what is your other job then? I actually work for, um, so it used to be a hedge fund. Yeah. And now it's a family office. Okay. I've been there for 21 years. And I work part-time for, um, so it's sort of fund management. And I book trades and I make sure that all the cash matches and I reconcile it once every month. So what do your friends and, and employers think about, you know, you doing this uh, additional work, sort of going in and helping families? Yes, so f- well, they knew that I was a volunteer. Yeah. So I, gave, I asked them to give me a reference. Um, and then the fact that my, other, my, my job within the family office is part-time. Um, so when I went to them and said, look, I'm going for this other job, it's only six hours a week. Mm-hmm. They were happy because it's not like I was going to be suddenly doing it full-time. So it's actually a really good balance of both. And do they think you're like a really good, yeah, you know, best person for the job as it was? Who the the family office? Yeah, the family office. Yeah. I mean, they're probably you know they they just let me get on with it. They're like, <laughs> oh, what's she up to now? Yeah, they just let me get on with it. That's fantastic. And you're obviously you have your own family as well. Yes, I've got two boys. So what what do they think about it all? I mean, again, not much really. They, I don't get much. I th- you know, they're, they're not that interested really. So it's more about yourself and, and uh, you know, doing, doing this is helping out yourself, it's helping your mental health. Yes. You're going out, you're talking to people, you're speaking to people, you're playing with children. Uh, I know, and I dress like a child as well. So I kind of dress like a children's entertainer most <laughs> of the time. So now I feel like I've, I've found my perfect job. Okay, so that's, that's the next thing. 
kids entertainer. Yes, potentially. I found my niche. I, I'm very happy. Um, row, row, row your boat and all that. I Because it's only for a few hours. It's obviously yeah. quite intense, especially when you've got three of them. Um, but I just love just, you know, making kids happy, showing them nature, going outside, showing them, you know, showing them a bug on the tree or a bird. Say hello to the birds. Go say hello to the llamas. You know, I'm really, I love it. And how, how do you get on with the mothers? Yeah, really good as well. Really good as well. I'm there so that the mums can have a break. Okay. Mums may not have slept well. Mum may not have had time to have a shower. My mum might, might want to get on with the cleaning, with jobs, whatever it is that she wants to do. I go around there so that pr- pretty much mum can go and get on with and have a bit of peace and quiet and know that the kids are happy and safe. Fantastic. And obviously, when the when the the, the babies and, and children go to sleep, that little nap, you can then talk with the mother, and you have the, she has a bit of that adult time. Yes, exactly. I could be the only adult that they get to speak to that day. Uh, But generally, we kind of time it so that I'm there when the kids are awake. Okay, okay. Yeah. But you still get to talk to them. You oh yes, get, you still get to talk yes, to them. Yeah. So you still get that sort of. Yeah, because it's really one of the really important things I learned on the course was how to listen to people, because so many people, when you're talking to them, all they're thinking about is what they're going to say next, yep. instead of actually listening to what you're saying. And some of the training that we did, in all aspects of your life, it was invaluable. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much, Gemma. Thank you. I would love to catch up with, again with you soon. Definitely. Um, we can find out about your trip to becoming, um, you know, a volunteer recruiter. Yes, definitely. S- very exciting. You if you are interested in uh, in um, volunteering for Home Start, then uh, the link will be available uh, on this uh, on this post. That's it on the description and on the video as well. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Alex from SMJ Media Group and I just want to say a big thank you to all our supporters that have bought us a coffee. Thank you to all the support that you've given us thus far. We've now introduced new membership options on our Buy Us A Coffee website. Being a member allows you to support us monthly and it allows you to also publish on our many social media pages. Check out buymeacoffee.com slash SMJ Media Group. We blog regularly so you can check out what we're up to. That's buymeacoffee.com slash SMJ Media Group. Thank you.